Yeah, I found the Iditarod 11 times now. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll learn a lot more about it in my build talk. I should introduce the dogs. This is Durga. Durga ran the Iditarod in 2003. And, and this is Schutzba. And this is Alice, the blonde dog. I was about your age, and my dad bought me a picture book on the Iditarod race, and it just totally caught my fascination. And it became a, a dream of mine to someday run the race. It was a promise I made to myself. I said, you know, one thing I really want to do is to run the Iditarod. Okay, this is the route, the Iditarod Trail. It starts in Anchorage all the way to Nome. It's about a thousand miles long. The Iditarod was started to kind of celebrate this old um, historic event where the city of Nome back in 1925 up here had this sickness epidemic that um, was <clears throat> overcoming the town. They had a bunch of medicine sitting here in Nenana. It was the dead of winter. The airplanes back then weren't really suited for winter travel. So they had to get this medicine from Nenana. It's about 700 miles up to Nome, either in these airplanes, which were kind of dangerous, or they decided to do it by dog team. It takes us between nine and about 14 days to finish the race. So early in the race, the teams are all kind of running together and there's dog sled traffic jams out in the middle of Alaska on some of these tight trails. Later on in the race though, you might be 20 miles ahead of the next team. Um, and you won't, you'll be running all day or all night and never see another team. Here is my team taking a break on one of the longer stops. I might get like a one hour nap, maybe two hours if I'm really efficient. Um, and we do that roughly twice a day. You start looking pretty tired like that guy. <laughs> when we, we camp out, we don't take a tent. So <clears throat> when it comes time for us to sleep, we just lay a little blanket down onto the snow, spread our sleeping bag out and crawl in for a quick nap. Like how do you wake up? When you're that tired, I set, I carry two watches and they have alarms and I sleep with my hat on and then I, I set the watch alarm one minute apart and I put them right against my ears. <laughs> this is us uh, coming to the finish shoot a few couple years ago in 2008. This year, me and this girl, uh, Jesse Royer, who's a friend of mine, we had the fi closest finish in the history of the Iditarod. I caught her. Um, coming up <clears throat> onto the street, and we ran into the finish chute neck and neck. And my lead dog just barely beat her lead dog by about that much. Uh, there, yeah, the lead, lead dog's nose. We kind of joked that if Jesse's lead dog would have stuck its tongue out, it would have won, she would have won. <laughs> I forgot to mention the Coast Guard is one of my sponsors. And uh, I need to really thank them for for allowing me to, to come here and share all this stuff with you guys. Size of the island, it's about nine miles if you were to kayak around the entire island. And most of the island is a nature preserve, so just here in the harbor is the only houses on the island. The school is a, a one-room schoolhouse, kindergarten through eighth grade, and uh, it's 104 years old. And we've got 12 students this year, which is one of the largest groups of students in probably about 25, 30 years. dogs total, uh, 45 I guess it is, um, and some of them are old retired dogs, like here's Swami here, she's just going around loose. Most of the checkpoints are mostly little native villages, but <clears throat> some of them are just remote tent camps set up out in the middle of nowhere. How right. many dogs can you have?
happen in the race? You can have 16 as the maximum. And there is a minimum, I think it's six. The body has natural rhythms when it wants to be kind of slowed down. And the dogs are the same way. And you'll see these times of day, like if you're running at two in the afternoon, the dogs will just slow down. They get, they get tired. And uh, you try to be resting at that time. That's naturally when we want to rest. And then late, late at night, it's the same way. And the musher is the same way. Um, when I was younger and I wrestled in college and I thought I was a real tough guy until I ran the Iditarod and it beat the heck out of me. <laughs> I still think it's probably the biggest physical challenge um, I've ever done. Yeah. I mean, you guys are probably familiar with the Coast Guard. They provide support um, for these vessels that are moving into the north. And so that's why they wanted to sponsor me, and I did Rod Musher, to uh, just kind of get the word out into the um, northern villages that, uh, that the Coast Guard is coming. and and try to get some of the local um, students there to, to sign up for the Coast Guard. This way, one, two, three. Do another couple, one, two. I'll just...